Welcome! In my adventure to learn animal sculpture, I'm challenging myself to sculpt adorably stylized sea otters and to find joy in the process. When I was sculpting guinea pigs, I talked about how making simple, stylized animals was so hard they hurt my brain. And you're probably thinking, wait, how is that joyous? <laughs> Allow me to explain. If it's so hard, why am I doing this? <laughs> I've asked myself that question a lot. Partly, it's to revisit an art style I used to do a lot as a child. I really enjoyed creating blobby, simplified animals, and they were so cute. I want to see what it's like now as an adult artist who has learned so much more about art. Also, simple abstraction is the opposite of what I usually do, which is more on the realism side of art. Which brings me to an art fear I want to overcome. Eh, maybe fear isn't the right word, but there is a strong emotional reaction to projects like this that go something like, oof, it's uncomfortable, it's strange, and I'd rather do something else. You might be asking yourself, why in the world am I doing this then? Why not make better use of my time? And the answer is, there is something making this a tremendously valuable use of my time. Things that push me out of my comfort zone almost always teach me something about art and design that I can then use in the projects I enjoy creating more. There's always a handy lesson to learn when things get uncomfortable. I'm starting to discover there's maybe a secret to realistic sculpture being easier for me, and I think it's anatomy. True, anatomy is hard in its own way, especially getting it to look real. Yet, anatomy also provides a blueprint. It's like a roadmap of all the little steps, all the little pieces I have to assemble. Learn to replicate those pieces well, and suddenly realism sculpture gets a lot easier for the very simple fact that I know where to go next. Cute, simple, stylized sculptures take the process a step further by adding questions like, what's necessary? What can I reduce and still have a recognizable sculpture? Exactly how am I going to abstract my sculpture? And see, it's that last question that has so many options, with each option requiring at least some new skill to develop. I think that's why I'm finding stylization so hard that it almost feels scary. It's not enough to be good at reconstructing what I see. Now I have to abstract. I have to choose how I want to abstract and then practice. <laughs> then start all over again when I decide meh, I don't like it. It's particularly during those feelings of meh and seeing sculptures that I had hoped for but didn't turn out as I wanted that I resolved to find a process to make this work. And so, I stop thinking like a realism sculptor and start thinking like a visual designer. This is where the joy starts to come into the story. I mentioned before that the only sculpture course I took was the foundation course, 3D design, and that I missed the opportunity to take the other sculpture courses. That's because my focus then was visual and graphic design. I was fascinated with the role of translating ideas into stylized forms like designing logos and patterns into iconic shapes. And it's the designer's skill of translating an idea, like the challenge of depicting an otter in a stylized way, that I'm finding is applicable now. It's almost like I'm designing a logo, but one in three dimensions instead of flat for screen or paper. 
As I get older, I'm starting to find there's a lot to life that might seem irrelevant to my current goals, yet with a little creativity and a sense of adventure, it's actually very applicable. Much as how everyone has a story to tell, I think everyone has something in their life applicable to their passions. For me, that's applying visual or graphic design to a sculpture. And that's why I'm regularly encouraging myself to face a style of project that is intimidating and confusing, because I know if I engage with it enough, eventually it will give me something back. Eventually, it will help me grow as an artist. It can be uncomfortable, yet there is also a lot of joy in learning to grow. Hence, I present joyful little sea otters. I hope you enjoyed this process story and perhaps it brought you a little joy too. If you'd like to see more, I'd love to invite you to subscribe so you can follow along on my animal art journey. While you're waiting for my next monthly upload, I'll leave you a playlist below to binge watch. Thank you so much for watching and I'll let you get back to your day. Bye!